Hey soldiers, Zoltan Pozar says that we might be going into a depression, an economic depression. Certainly he sees a lengthy recession as a very high probability. We're going to talk about what you may want to do to prepare yourself for that in order to uh, be able to thrive through it without suffering any calamitous uh, economic hardships uh, that will take years to recover from. Now, who's Zoltan Pozar? He's an economist. He's a longtime Fed watcher and analyst, currently an analyst for Credit Suisse. He is also an author. Now, usually we don't put too much stock in the experts because a lot of these experts uh, have not made any money. But Zoltan Pozar has. I hate to... You ever, you ever listen to the movie critics and they're, they're so, uh, you know harsh on certain movies, but they've never made a movie. I hate that, right? Doesn't make any sense. You haven't done the thing that you are criticizing. So Zoltan Pozar doesn't fit that bill. He has gone out, made money for himself and others, and he knows how to read the tea leaves of this economy. The cats don't lie. Out of mercy. All right, Zoltan Pozar says that we are probably looking at what's called an L-shaped recovery. An L-shaped recovery is one that certainly doesn't bounce back up. If you picture the uh, number, the letter, rather, it's late, L, then you know that uh, you know it does one of these numbers, and it just meanders along for a while uh, in a pretty consistent lateral direction. doesn't go in this direction, which is what we want to see when we look at our portfolios, right? U.S. faces L-shaped recession as Fed scrambles to tame inflation. The U.S. economy will likely have to stay in recession for longer than anticipated in order to bring runaway inflation under control. According to a top analyst, Zoltan Pozar, the global head of short-term interest rate strategy at Credit Suisse Group AG, wrote a client note pushing back on the widespread sentiment that the worst of inflation may be behind us and that the Federal Reserve will soon begin lowering interest rates. That's the talk of the town. In fact, the gold market is anticipating that because when they see, uh, you know, actions being taken by the Fed that are contrary to controlling inflation, then gold tends to, you know, uh, make some gains. But Zoltan Pozar is saying that uh, don't be so quick to anticipate that. The U.S. may have to gird for a so-called L-shaped recession that will be deeper and longer than expected. Now, if that happens, you're going to need to be able to ride that out. And we want to be in a position where we ride it out while still looking for opportunities to acquire assets. In fact, that's the opportune time, considering the fact that a lot of assets will be uh, a lot less expensive than they have been, you know, in recent years. Polls are cited the ongoing Russian invasion in Ukraine, as well as disruptions to the supply chain exacerbated by intermittent COVID-related lockdowns in China. And, you know, China is one of the biggest producers, if not the biggest producer of stuff, okay, in the world. War is inflationary, Pozar said. Think of the economic war, and we have called it World, world War III on this channel. We've called this economic war that is taking place between the EU and NATO versus Russia and Belarus and to an extent China, okay? We are in World War III. It's just that they're not uh, missiles flying back and forth yet, and we hope that does not happen, but there are certainly sanctions going every which way. Uh, Russia has placed sanctions on the, on the United States. We'll see what China does after Pelosi has visited the island of Taiwan. How will China react to that? We shall see. But we certainly are in uh, a global conflict. It's just economic. It's not military. And look, uh, we hate to see people lose their lives, our uh, valuable and honored men and women of the service. But people can lose their lives in an economic downturn for sure, okay? So the results are the same. An economic war can have uh, 
you know, results that are very detrimental to lives. And we certainly don't want to see that. Uh, Pozar also cited restrictions on immigration and a decrease in mobility brought about by the pandemic as key factors that have resulted in a tight labor market. Now, see, he's being upfront. We know because you watch the channel that the jobs numbers aren't as rosy as have been reported. In fact, fewer jobs were created in June than were anticipated. Now, Pozar goes on to suggest that the Fed's going to need to raise interest rates somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 6%. Now, we got a long way to go uh, before we get there unless Powell starts hiking, you know, um, by whole percentage points uh, in the next round of uh, potential hikes, which I believe is September. Don't quote me on that. Um, but he's going, he's got two other opportunities this year, I believe, to increase rates. And you know what? He can do it whenever he wants, quite frankly. He, he does have that power. It's not like if he misses an opportunity, then it doesn't come along again. He is the chair of the Federal Reserve Board. They'll take whatever actions they deem necessary to control inflation. Um, we'll see if they are successful. So um, if this happens, listen... You should be out there doing the things you need to do right now to shore up your position. Uh, you should be trying to figure out what your position is uh, on your W-2 job. Uh, if it's not secure, maybe you do need to find temporary employment on a part-time or a gig basis in order to start building up that emergency fund, okay? Uh, if we go through anything that might look like a depression, if we get even close to 2008 levels of recession, uh, that could be very difficult, especially if it's a prolonged period of time. So listen, uh, and this might actually hasten in a, a recession, but uh, well, we're in a recession. It might hasten a lengthier recession, a deeper recession, but uh, you've got to start uh, bringing your spending under control. You've got to also look at aggressively tackling that high interest credit card debt, okay, and knocking that out, paying something on the principal. Don't just make the minimum payments. Now, Pozar is basically saying that he believes that unless actions are taken, we're going to continue to see inflation. And I tend to believe that. Now, initially, I took a look at the short-term energy outlook from uh, the U.S. Department of Energy the Energy uh, Information Administration specifically, and they are they got a little rosy picture they're painting here. And I looked at this, and, and initially I started to get excited and say, oh, wow, they see Brent crude coming down uh, to $89 a barrel in 2023. And I said, wow, they look like uh, they've got some good prices here on their projections for gasoline coming down to an average of $3.57. But then I remember these are the same people who told you uh, uh, that uh, inflation was transitory. The U.S. government. These are the same people that are now telling you we're not in a recession. We're going to throw away the definition we've used for 50 years, and we're going to identify it as something else. The recession. Uh, it's not a recession. It just identifies as two consecutive quarters of negative growth, and we'll have to figure out what to call that. Recession is no longer uh, no longer appropriate. So to the extent that these oil prices remain high, then we can expect that in inflation will continue to, you know, be up there unless the consumer just says, you know what, A, I've had enough or B, I just can't afford it because I got laid off. And we are starting to see some uh, some uh, job losses here. They're heavily concentrated in the uh, tech sector. Robinhood, for example, um, they were all the rage last year. Uh, they've been laying off some people. And uh, recently here, they laid off 23% of their staff. So almost a quarter of their entire staff, uh, they've gone ahead and cut them. And uh, Facebook, Google, other outfits are eyeing layoffs as well. I uh, believe Elon Musk just uh, went through a round. So we're seeing it centered in tech, uh, er tech areas right now. But remember, those tech employees, they make a lot of money. Okay. So if that money is not 
taken out of their paychecks and, you know, they're taking it to restaurants, they're uh, buying cars, they're doing this, they're doing that. If they're not doing that, then we could see a slowdown, a snowball effect in the restaurant selling less meals, making less money, the car dealer selling less cars, making less money, and you get the picture on and on and on. Okay, so as I said, pay down that high interest debt. Stay focused on that. Do your due diligence on uh, investment opportunities, be they equities, real estate, whatever floats your boat. Do your due diligence to figure out uh, whether or not you can spot some bargains as we go through this. Leave some money on the table for you to be able to seize these opportunities because these are the times where millionaires are made, okay? Blood in the streets, okay? Opportunity is out there when there's blood in the streets. You should be buying. Baron Rothschild said that. So do your due diligence and make some things happen for you and for your family. Now, before we get out of here, we did an interview. I really want you to watch this interview because when you talk about uh, economic downturns, the people of Belarus are dealing with that situation as we speak because they've had sanctions placed on them. We did a video with Yana Pomerantz and Yana talks to us about a recent trip she made to Belarus and other countries in Eastern Europe. She's going to talk to you about how the Belarusians are dealing with sanctions. Watch that video and I will talk to you soon.